Ladies and gentlemen, for RIA Season and National Events Center, in association with the General Entertainment Authority, Gold Star Promotions, and Sella, Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury Promotions, and Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing, in association with AJ Boxing and Salida Promotions, present the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. The officials assigned at ringside, representing the British Boxing Board of Control, supervising Robert Smith of Wales. The three judges scoring this contest from England, Michael Alexander, from Sweden, Andreas Stenberg, from the United States, Steve Weisfeld, and inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, your referee, Steve Gray. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring, and they are ready. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with blue, and weighing in officially at 238.6 pounds. His professional record, 27 fights, 26 victories, including 14 big wins by knockout with only one defeat. Originally from Sweden, but now living, training, and fighting out of the Big Apple, New York City, New York, USA. He's ranked number two in the world by the IBF in the heavyweight division. He's the former EBU European heavyweight champion, Otto All in And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing white and officially weighing in at 251 pounds. This Olympic gold medal champion now has a professional record consisting of 29 fights, 26 victories, including 23 big wins by knockout with three defeats. From Watford, London, England, the two-time heavyweight champion of the world, AJ Anthony. Joshua! Let's go, AJ! Okay, I'm all right with these shorts, we can see the navel, okay? Keep your punches off the shorts. If I call a break, take a step back. Don't deliberately throw punches down the back of the head and protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up. Good luck, fellas. Oh, here we go. Otto Wallen so confident tonight. Says that AJ is not the same anymore. He's mentally fragile, and I will expose him. As for Joshua, he said, listen, Wallen's right. I'm not the same anymore. I'm better now, and I'm going to show it tonight. Here we go. 12 rounds. Heavyweight division. What do you need to see here in round one, Darren, that lets you know that, hey, AJ is going to seek and destroy? Punching through the target, turning those hips into the shot, being the bully, being on the front foot. A little step around there from AJ right off the bat. And letting them hands go. AJ, once he gets going, once he starts throwing punches in three and four in combinations, that's when he's dangerous. Not too much thinking, just reacting if you're AJ. Yeah, it needs to be positive on that front foot. Feints, try and push Wallin back. He will move Wallin. We we'll see that against Gassiev, likes to move. And he likes to throw a lot of jabs. Wallin, very tricky as well. Very durable. Both these fighters, this is their third fight in this year, so activity's not going to be a problem like we saw in the last fight with Wilder. Good body shot from AJ right to the rib cage. And I love seeing that. I mean, AJ is a bigger fighter here, and him going down to the body, bending his knees, making a smaller target, that's what you want to see. That's strategy. 
Yeah, he mentioned the jab of Wallin, who, who throws an awful lot. You just see in there the step on the outside of the right foot of Wallin. That's what Anthony Joshua needs to do and throw the right hand as Wallin throws his jab. We see that when he fought Charles Martin. Perfect shot for the southpaw. Counter right from AJ. And you could, you could tell that's exactly the game plan. That's what they worked on. Throwing that right hand exactly when Wallin is going to throw his shot. Make sure that his left foot is on the outside of Wallin's right. He looks focused, AJ. He looks switched on. There's a nice right hand that came up short by AJ because he didn't, he didn't set it up. Wiley came right back with his own left hand. AJ sticking that jab out. Doesn't want to wait too long, Wallin. He needs to let AJ know he's in a fight. He's not overawed by this occasion or AJ as an opponent. He needs to land something, get into some sort of rhythm behind that jab. A little bit of redness, too, in the nose of Otto Wallin right off the bat. Wallin with that reaction. The right hook. Wallin set the all-time CompuBox heavyweight record for jabs thrown in a fight in his bout against Murat Gassiev. 873. That smashed the record held by Vitaly Klitschko against Kevin Johnson in 2009, who threw 749. Like a drill, eh? was the aggressor in the first round. The question everyone has is how is Joshua going to react once he gets hit? You know, he, got, he came out real aggressive on that front foot, you know, throwing that right hand, throwing that jab, snapping it. I want to see how he's going to react once Wallin comes forward and starts landing his own punches. Yeah, and he's looking to hold his feet a bit more here, Wallin, to let some shots of his own go. I still like the approach from AJ, looking for that right hand down the southpaw stance, taking that step across the front foot of Wallin, just putting the right hand short there, but when he does fully commit to the shot, it will do some damage. Tell you what, I'm seeing some sharpness, some 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 good stuff from Joshua right now. He's throwing the jab under the, the jab of, of Wallin. He's not trying to go over the jab of Wallin. Usually, they're not only fighting for feet position, a southpaw left-hander and a right-hander, they're also fighting for the jab position. And normally, the one on top is the one dominating. This time, Joshua's going under. That's what Usyk was doing to him, actually, and landing those jabs successfully. Yeah, I always feel variation against the southpaw important. Fire some shots through the middle, get your foot on the outside. The right oh, hand, big right hand, that stood Wallen back, or pushed him back, rather. And it, it's that jab that set it up. There it is again. That, that's not going to miss. It's because of the jab. The jab is going under the right jab of Wallen, creating space yeah. for that straight right hand. And it's the shot. It's the exact same shot he threw against Martin. So intelligent the way he takes his head off the line, on the outside of the lead hand of Wallin, just out of that danger and almost a safe zone, if you like. That's right, and it was just about the second round where he exploded on, on Martin. He doesn't throw the right hand too high either, AJ. He throws it more at the chest and you know you're going to hit something. Blood coming out of the nose now of Wallin. 
I love that right hand by Joshua. He's throwing it behind the jab, and he's also throwing it as soon as Valen comes in with his jab. He's punching with him, breaking up the breaking up the rhythm of Joshua. Oh, excuse me, of Valen. In and out, perfectly done by AJ. He's looking good, AJ. Compo composed, relaxed, calm. And in his work. And not over overextending himself yep. either. He's not really loading up on the on the punches. He's, it's a good snap. And his feet are under him. I like the variation. I've said this a few times already, but that right hand, not just targeting the head straight to the body. He's hooked with the shot. This is better from Wallin. Something to build from at the end of this round. So here we go, round three. AJ certainly had his positive moments, but at the end of the second round, you liked what you saw from Valen. Yeah, he started creeping forward on the front foot, trying to put a dent in AJ. I love that right hand to the body that AJ's throwing. That's going to open up an, uh, an avenue for Valen right to the chin. It's nice and straight, too. Not loading up, but just perfect, perfect technique by Joshua. He's even stepping in deep enough where he can have power. Full concentration from AJ. He is locked in. Yes, he is, man. I don't know if it's uh, the fact that he's familiar with Valen, having sparred him and fought in amateurs, but there's a confidence to Joshua. Yeah, you know, there's no hesitation. Valen said they sparred over 150 rounds together over the years. They know each other inside and out. There you go. And that, that's what you see by Joshua. There's no feeling out rounds. He already knows what to expect. It's not that he doesn't respect Valen. It's just he knows, he knows what's coming. He's just pouring a little bit of that jab. Joshua looking to draw out the lead, I think, on one in, so he can look at that right hand again. Just needs to bring his feet in there, just falling a little short, but that's that right hand to the body. It's a lovely shot. He just needs to go back upstairs. Good work. Oh, and getting a little twitchy there. Yeah, it did. He lived, the feet, the feet came off the canvas with that right hand. Joshua just missed with a big short right hand right now. Straight left from Valen. There it is again. See, he's waiting for the lead. He wants the counter. He wants that jab coming out. Joshua, so he can throw the right straight down. Joshua looks sharp, man. He does. Yeah, he Focus. looks really sharp. Focus. Switch done. Valen keeps pawing at his nose. And that left hook moved Valen. It's time for Valen to start aiming at the chest of Joshua because Joshua's getting really aggressive. So just throw anything where you start landing and, and backing up Joshua. We're seeing some damage from the jab of Joshua in the face of Wallen. Just a bit swelling under that right eye. There you go. That's what I want to see from Ballin. You know, he fell off balance because he threw it from too far. But if he can start double jabbing his way in and throwing that left hand right to the chest, start hitting something, getting confidence, back up Joshua. Let him feel that, that you got something in return. Is that a cut under the right eye now, Ballin, as well? Looks like it may be. He's bleeding from the nose, and I think that might be a, a blood from the nose that got in his chin. Yeah, I think Wallin, on the flip side, he needs to get that front foot across and look at that left hand. Take his head off the line. He's getting bullied at the moment. There's a right hand from Wallin that, that lands. Now, I believe that is a cut, Sergio. Is it? I thought it was smeared blood. We'll find out right yeah. now. Either way, Wallin's face looks a mess. Yeah, very good positive start from Anthony Joshua. Focus, he switched on, working the jab well, stepping on the outside, looking for the right hand. And I know you've been a fan of this, Sergio, the right hand to the body. A beautiful shot right there. And you, you can see that he threw away the jab just for he can get his left foot in position to get leverage on that right hand. And because he landed it to the gut, now the ones upstairs landed. Look for more right hands to land up, up top and looking for that left hook. It will get around the guard of Valen soon. Valen needs to start getting respect of his own now. Oh, 
So here we are in round four. Otto Fallen, bloody nose and a cut under his right eye as Joshua is pretty much having his way with the Swede so far. Yep, doing the right thing with the lead hand, with the feet, the right hand, the variation with the shot. Been very impressive, targeting the body, Ooh. seeing a hook there. This is really, really good stuff, positive start from Anthony Joshua. Very positive. It's the accuracy and the fact, the balance is what I'm really impressed with with Joshua. He's stepping in deep enough to where he's landing that right hand to the, the gut, the chest, and upstairs without falling off balance and getting full leverage. Joshua looks sharp, man. You can see it in his eyes. He's total focus, but his body, his balance, everything's there. And he stopped Wallin from really committing to the shot of the fear of getting countered. You can see there, he's just putting the shots out, Wallin. Just kind of putting the shots as opposed to committing to the shots. It's an interesting game plan by Otto because coming in, I thought we'd see more of what we saw. Oh. Right, sorry, Chris. I thought we'd see more of what we saw against Murat Garcia where he was moving and staying away from these types of interactions. Ooh. Instead, he's trading with a bigger puncher. Joshua just missed with a big right hand. That's that's the game plan. You're going to see a lot of the, that right hand. It's intercepting any time that Ball is thinking of throwing his. Joshua's punching in between the shot. Before the fight, Eddie Hearn told me Joshua in four. He's predicting a fourth round knockout. We got half the round left to go. I don't think he'll be in four, but he's getting closer and closer with that right hand. And it's because he's been throwing it to the stomach that's opening up the chin shot. Yeah, he's getting closer with the feet as well, really starts to bring him in now. Exactly, he's been doing that since the first round. Getting that foot closer and closer, and you know that when you got a southpaw and left-hander, that foot position is important. Josh is doing the smart thing by sneaking that foot in. Again, the variation with the right hand starting to turn it into a hook as well. Upstairs now, always keeping one in thinking. Ballin's got to get AJ's respect. I want to see Joshua keep going downstairs with that right hand. Straight right hand, right to the chest and the belly. I think Otto's got to stop being a stationary target, too. He's just kind of bouncing back and forth and giving AJ an easy target to hit. AJ loaded up right there in that car. Ballin's actually check hooking. This is good boxing, really good stuff. Yeah. Ballin said that AJ's mentality is fragile, but right now it's Ballin who looks fragile. His face is looking pretty fragile. <laughs> Ooh, oh, there right he is. the right hand. Skimmed the face of Valen just an inch away for AJ. Joshua's barely been missing that since the first round. That's, that's the money punch they've been working on. That's what's going to work for him tonight. Yeah, he's not wasted anything at all, Joshua. Wallen's got to get in some rhythm here. Far too easy for Joshua right now. By the way, I want to apologize to those of you in certain parts of the world who experienced audio issues. We are back now. Hope you're enjoying our main event. Sometimes you got to be a little more aggressive, but use that defense. Make him miss. Double up on the jab left. Don't let him get set. And here's what I'm talking about with Joshua. Beautiful rhythm right there. Threw away the jab. Got the counter from Ballin. Joshua took a slight step back with his right foot right there. Just barely missed with that big right hand. That was planned on and worked on in the gym. That's beautiful power boxing by a power puncher in Joshua. Not falling off balance. Barely missing with a knockout shot. Round five, and something has got to change for the big Swede here. As he eats another right hand to the body, Chris Mannix is scoring this fight unofficially, of course. How do you have it? I've got it four rounds to none in favor of Anthony Joshua. Pretty easy fight to score at this point. I love his punch selection. He's going upstairs, downstairs. Uh, and I don't love, you see a big right hand from AJ there, how Otto Valin is choosing to fight this fight. This is the AJ of old, almost. The way he's throwing the shots with real meaning. I'm glad you said almost. Yes, I'm seeing flashes of it. But uh, normally, you know, he, he was coming in with a little bit more aggression with combinations. Right now, he's pot shotting yeah. with power. But, but beautiful shots. He's been doing that since the first round. Just the turning of the hips, turning that back foot, committing to the shot is what I like from AJ. Not only that, but his foot position, he's not falling off balance. I mean, it's a perfect torque 
of the right hand. I think the only difference... Oh, there's a right hand for AJ again. The only difference from the AJ of old is that the AJ of old was a combination puncher. We're seeing AJ land some big shots. We're still not yet seeing those combination punches. And that's what I meant, exactly. Before, you know, he, he would throw five, six punch combinations because he, he was still an undefeated fighter who was doing all the knocking out, one of the highest percentage knockout artists out there. But now, you know, it's a more calculated pressure puncher. Do you feel like Valens just trying to get through these early rounds to turn on late? Because he certainly hasn't been the offensive juggernaut we've seen in his past fights. Yeah, he's not offering much at all. I did say in the build-up to this fight, he's very versatile. He can move, he can come forward, but this is the only real time that we've seen him on the front foot, but not offering anything in offense, not letting his hands go. No! Oh! Joshua. Can he be that ferocious finisher that he used to be? Chris Vanek starts his head yet. That sounds familiar. There's the right hook. Alternating the right hand from straight to around the guard. There's the hook again. And the uppercut. He needs to bring the uppercut into play, whether it's the left or the right. The elbows are wide of one in. Otto Wallen so full of confidence heading into this fight, but AJ is literally beating that out of him right now. He looks like a wilting rose fading away. And the shots of Wallen coming back, they're weak. There's no power in the shots at all. Fantastic stuff from Anthony Joshua. That left hook rock Wallen, kind of around the temple. Look at this right hand. That's the right hand I've been talking about. The first round. How did he not go down, yeah, by the way? Big left hook. Because it was the right hand that he actually wanted to land. The left hook just came out of reaction. See? Oh, it's over. They've stopped the fight. And it is over indeed. Anthony Joshua gets his 24th knockout. And boy, did he make it look easy. Yeah, I had a suspicion they were going to stop this fight. When Otto Ballen got back to the corner, Joey Gamash gave him a long look, looked at his nose. I think that might be broken. Knockout victory for Anthony Joshua. That was the sharpest I've seen Anthony Joshua in a long time. Confident, powerful, sharp, game plan, everything was firing on all cylinders. That's an excellent performance. Joshua's back. He needed a violent performance tonight, and boy, did he get it. Just look at the face of Otto Wallen. It was about to get violent, I'll tell you that right now. He delivered. He done his he part. Delivered. He done his part. He's saying he's back now. I agree. That was very, very good. That was a lot more spiteful than we've seen in a long time. Well, he did his job. Unfortunately, Wilder didn't pick up his end of the bargain. So now do we perhaps see AJ versus Parker in or the march? In the Will rematch? we see Hergovic? AJ Hergovic. AJ Parker would be a rematch. I don't know if that's going to tickle the fancy of a lot of fans, but you know what? This is a different Joseph Parker. I get it, but maybe one more fight in between. I think Joshua is looking for bigger and better. Look, right there's now. a lot of moving parts now that Deontay Wilder is most likely out of the picture, but Anthony Joshua is ranked very highly in the IBF rankings. Philip Perkovich is the number one contender. Anthony Joshua, come next month, could be the number two contender. I think it's most likely at this point we see A.J. Hergovich sometime next year. That's why you're here, Chris Mannix. That would, that would be a real banger. El Animal versus the perhaps revitalized A.J. Maybe, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. That fight will make a lot of sense if he can fight the Animal and Joseph Parker on the undercard with another big fight, and then the winners can get each other. And that I'm makes more, all the sense. And I'm more all for that fight. That's a fantastic fight. It really is. That's fireworks right there. A.J. promised, and A.J. delivered. And let's watch the final moments of what turned out to be the final round. The referee goes over to the corner, and that is it.
for me, that's the right call, regardless of a nose injury or not. I was looking intently at that corner as he walked back. He was unsteady. He didn't really know where he was. And AJ was on the ascendancy. He looked very good. He was spiteful. He was enjoying himself in there, Sergio. No, he, that's, that's the sharpest I've seen him in a while. And look, Ottavallen didn't retire. He didn't look for a way out. This is a man that's never been stopped. This is a man that's been active for three fights in 2023, coming off the biggest win of his career. Anthony Joshua just beat a fighter that had momentum in his favor. Otto Wallen said AJ's not the same anymore, and AJ responded by saying, you're right, I'm probably better, and he looked it tonight. Pounding his gloves, he's ready to go another, another fight right now, why not? He's gonna go and hit the pads back in the dressing room. He's pumped, and you can understand why. Very, very, very good performance. One of the best we've seen from AJ in a long time. And there's Amir Khan giving the big fella a hug. And look at the smile. It's back. The smile's back, man. I mean, the, the, we missed it. the spike that we saw leading up to the promotion, the way in, the back guy, the loss, the back-to-back -back losses to Usyk. This is the, the fighter that we see. The happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. Anthony Joshua's back.